Video game bros shed sweet tears when female sidekicks die. Why do women often wind up in dangerous situations in video game narratives? Why do they die so dramatically? And where do they actually go when they passed away? In remembrance of video game history's losers, Jenny Forford commemorates female legacy in a didactic live James seminar. All right, does that work? Does it work? Nice. All right, thank you for that really dramatic introduction. And yes, it will begin now. Audio input, please. Storytelling has often favored characters that innately represent privileges. The prominent, untarnished, white cis male figure remains the perpetual focus and hero of most narratives. However, these narratives devote little or no attention to the sacrifices and deaths of women who often only bolster the hero's exposure and victory. What happens to them after the credits? Do we simply forget about them? Today I'm here to tell the story of history's losers, to remind us of their legacy and commemorate their loss. But now. So it is actually me, Jenny Forfart, and I'm just like you see, I'm a producer of music and a fashion model. So I'm a DJ and also a local anesthetic of tranquil dreams and unfulfilled desires. So what is going on today? I will be your guide through this lecture of commemorating all the female heroines in video game history. I don't know if any one of you played a video game, but I highly think so. So we're just going to start with a video game, a, a classic video game design choice that often happens in JRPGs, which is role-playing games often hailing from Japan. So what happens here? We see a flower field suspended in an endless horizon. And we often see this setting in JRPGs like Final Fantasy series. Do you know that one? Like, yeah, probably, right? or the Tales of series, and in the older and also in the newer entries to that series, there are often females in flower fields, and it's often a glossy HD cutscene, and they try to really catch the flower petals that rain from above. I can't do that right now, because the screen is really too big. But for many females, it's their only chance to really feel themselves until the cutscene fades out. So, the flower field is really like a cliched setting to, to really show that women really don't have a story in, like, they don't have a place in the narrative, but being that passive creature who's just like suspended, like wobbling here, and just waiting for something to happen, just waiting until they catch a, yeah, a leaf or something. I don't know, I don't, I don't know. And actually, I'm not a woman myself, so I really don't know how women feel there. So let me just put that there. So what are we going to do now? We leave the story here behind. We leave the, this pathetically romantic setting of the flower field and just go down, because there's not much choice. You can't just go down here. And leave this place and enter the place where all the women lie after they died in the cemetery. So I created this place to commemorate all the women who died in video game history. What's wrong with the lights? Can't you decide? Okay. So what are we going to do now is 
I'm going to give you theoretical knowledge about reasons for women to die in video game narratives. So first, and I forgot something because I brought to you something really special, which is this, it's the official strategy guide for the game called Never Forgetty. And we're not going to use this camera, I think I'm just going to read it out so we can make a little let's read. So the first reason for women to die really is the butch therapy. And I'm just going to read it out because it's much more concise than I could ever put. So, in heteronormative storylines, masculine femmes have no place. Their sexual preferences causes them to not be interested in the leading male character, who's often a macho, which in turn makes it too difficult for, norm for narratives to address their complex female personalities that don't exclusively revolve around romance. Solution, they die, or they surrender to male flirt attacks and turn straight. So we have a classical military gay conversion in this example here, which is Meryl Gainsborough from Metal Gear Solid, a game that is very, very popular in the early 2000s, no, even like around 2000. Well, it was a banger, and it's a really good game. So what happened to Meryl? Like, Meryl is a really strong butch, as you can see. Like, she has a really big bicep, and, like, there's even an anchor. So we, again, have, like, a really cliched notion of a really masculine femme. Like, she has an anchor here, like a pirate. Like, she's not a pirate, she's in the military. Um, whatever. So what happened to Meryl? Did any one of you play Metal Gear Solid? Very good. So, in Metal Gear Solid, Meryl was first like that proud lesbian who was really not getting on. Like, she was not getting with the main protagonist called Snake, something that is like Snake. I mean, that's really obvious that it's something phallic. And <laughs> so, she was not really getting with him and she was like, hey, I'm a proud lesbian, I don't need you, like, I'm strong by myself. And in the end of the story, like, she was really turned against this protagonist by a psychokinetically gifted um, special troop guy and he was like making her turn against the main protagonist and everyone was like yeah finally like a boss fight is going to happen and the only way you can like really defeat this boss is you have to bitch slap the shit out of Meryl until she falls unconscious so the game really forces you to like indulge into domestic violence, which is rather odd, I would say. So much to Meryl. And there's also a storyline arc where she dies, so we have the, we, we arc it back to the, to what this kind of presentation is all about. So the next grave is the neo-Christian martyrdom. And I will explain to you, with the help of this very concise, strategy guide what the neo-christian martyrdom is all about so it is quite simple an imminent apocalypse is avoided through a dramatic sacrifice of everyone's favorite female character did our girls really just die so that man could revel in their happy ending question mark and here we probably have the most iconic heroine who ever like, spoiler, but it's 2018, so it's almost 2019, so you should know. This is Aerith Gainsborough, who died in Final Fantasy VII. So she was stabbed by this really... Um, uh. Sorry, here's a hair, I have to get rid of that. So she was stabbed in the back by a guy wielding a 20-meter-long katana. It's really 20-meter long, so, like, well, it ranges from, like, 2 meter to 20, like, it just depends on how exaggerated the fanboys put it. But it's a really long katana, and she's, again, impaled by something very phallic. And it seems to be a common thing to be causing deaths of women. So, yeah, and here she is kind of put to her wet grave. And this is also the only time in history where 
the hardest gaming bro, like really the toughest man was allowed to cry because this was heartbreaking, guys. Heart shattering. So here's a little Easter egg. It just says where we are, a place of remembrance, dot, dot, dot. It has nothing to do with the storyline. It's just, we are here. So the next cause for women to die is the hetero futurity. Marriage, motherhood, housewords, powerful magic or sword-wielding femmes turn domestic and are deprived of any agency in their post-ending story arc fantasy. So after the game. Divorce is usually not considered because the game ended already. What we have here is Celeste, a sword-wielding femme of Final Fantasy VI. So she used to be a genetically modified um, general of the Imperial Army until she really fall in love badly with our main protagonist again. And it's a really, it's not reciprocated by him because he is still in love with his deceased wife. So we have a really strange triangle going on there. And there's also a really intricate, like I really recommend playing this game because there's a really intricate bondage scene. Like a 12-bit bond, or 16-bit, like the graphics. It's 16, right? Like these pixelated, gra just like these backgrounds I made, like I don't know how many bits, but. So we see soldiers again bitch slapping her on tight on a wall so we really have that sexual thing going on there between the soldiers and her and then she's freed and subsequently falls in love with the main protagonist so she really owes him his life at the end it is heavily hinted that they marry which kind of equals like dropping dead because as we all know like most uh, most accidents happen in the households so <laughs> It is per se a very dangerous situation she's getting in. <laughs> I don't find that funny. I don't know why you're laughing. Actually, I do. So, the last chapter here in this scenery is being a royal heiress. So, let me just read it out. Your princess is once more in another castle. There she suffers from royal inhibitions, aristocratic power structures, and potentially curses her children with the same fate of royal succession. So we have many, many, many examples of princesses that get like abducted all the time or that like almost die. But here I have the most prominent one, which is Princess Die. Oh, it's Grace Kelly, sorry, it's Grace Kelly. So Grace Kelly, just like Princess Di, uh, died in a car accident when like s strange constellations between her, her husband, and another uh, monegasque um, yeah, nobleman or someone who just hangs out there. He hangs out in Monaco. He just has the money for that. So that happened there and she had to die in a car crash, just like Lady Di. It's really ominous because it seems to be, again, a rather recurring theme. So after we have that... Now, there's an interactive part. I'm sure you've been waiting for this. So, what I have here... I hope you brought pants because I didn't. So what we're going to be doing now is everyone takes a, a postcard and what is really handy about, yeah, just hand them people, one here, one there. There are not enough for everyone because I didn't believe this room was so freaking big. So. If you look at the back side, of the postcard, you can see first on the bottom right my website, which is conveniently placed to your satisfaction. What I want you to do right now, though, is to write down your thoughts about what would you tell these people, like these women who died for no reason ever, to just make the story a bit more dramatic. What would you 
want to let them know, if you could. So actually it's a little commemorative note that I want you to think about. I really hope you brought pens. I think one minute is sufficing. And in the meanwhile, we can really listen to this soothing track. By the way, I kind of did all the music for this. But just like the backgrounds, I stole half of it. <laughs> Do these microphones work? Yeah? The microphones on the sides? Who's in charge? <laughs> We'll just try. Do they work? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I think we can go now. Right? Did you think about something you would want to tell them? Or, or just any thoughts about what you wish? Go to the mic, please. So much collaboration. And the, ah, yeah. Great. Yeah, I thought it's gonna be, is it done? Hello? It's not Hello? working. Now? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I, I thought it's going to be anonymous, so... Um. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry to shatter your illusion. <laughs> but I'm, yeah, just <laughs> wanting to be a hug. So, <laughs> I wrote, um, stay strong, um, you will always be missed, loved and objectified. Also, <laughs> thanks for being my secret lesbian queer crush as an awkward teenager. Can you repeat that last part? You will always be missed. <laughs> I said, also, thanks for being my secret lesbian queer crush as an awkward teenager. Thank you for being my secret lesbian teen crush. Absolutely love it. There was one thing I really, like, did not understand because you said, like, stay strong, but they're, they're freaking dead. So, like, what does it do to them? So, but... Um, I love the last part because no one ever said to them, like, you're just a hot girl or you're just a hot femme in their storyline. So that's really good. I never saw that somewhere. Oh, yeah, there's more. Yeah. Which microphone? Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry for your death. Maybe you will not be forgotten and maybe you get reborn in a different video game with better chances. But who's, like, um, maybe we should think about the authorship of the new video game. Like, who is going to make these video games? Maybe you. Me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that is so kind. Thank you. Well, um, because I'm rather humble, I would say we hope that an elderly lesbian produces your next video game. <laughs> because that's also probably be cool. Okay, next one. I think yeah. we're good after that, though. Hi, ladies. Come back as zombies. Kick the shit out of the guys who bitch slapped you. You kick the shit out of the guys who bitch slapped you? Yep. <laughs> Don't 
get the zombie part though. Zombie? Yeah, they should come back as zombies. It wouldn't work if they're just dead. I mean, they have to come back as zombies. <laughs> Return as zombies. Yep. Amazing. <laughs> All right, what do you have to say to them? You are not a dramatic device, but a person in your own right. No one can ever take that away from you. Heaven seems to be like a pretty male-run place. So you can leave these dick-dangling pricks behind and do your thing and find some more appreciating company. Yeah, find some what? Some more appreciating company. Yes, I also do wish that for these women. Nice. What we shouldn't forget is that it's also like even more so in video games, it's not there, it's not within their agency to really find their, their peer group because they only have a set amount of characters that are like just built to make lives of women hard. So I'm not going to add anything, but thank you for your contribution. It was really nice. All right, we have to speed it up, I think. Okay. So I'm saying this to them. This didn't have to happen. It's not your fault. Your destiny was written by a greater power that you cannot escape. By God. Well, by a man. Or by man. <laughs> Well, thank you for that. <laughs> All right, last one. I wrote a bit more, but I'll make it quick. Yeah, um, or maybe the essence. Mm -hmm. um, if if you would type it, you have to. You would have to type it the following way: open brackets. So many, but not all. Close brackets. Hashtag men are trash, so let's all help crush patriarchal scripts in video games. A very interesting. Uh, I do have to say, however, I don't take orders from people in the audience. Thank you. So, with these words being said, we leave the graveyard, to find us in a scenery that welcomes us after a long day at the cemetery where all the old people hang out at the cemetery cafe. Here we can see old people enjoying their coffee and cake while we learn something. So. This person says, Hey, why are you staring at me? Which is pretty accurate because that is not how communication works. Like, you're not just staring at people, just waiting for them to say something. Is that right? Right. This is not how communication works, and I would be offended by that too. Uh, this uh, woman does not know what butch means. Does anyone not know what butch means? Or is it clear? Okay, to say it really, like, in a very derogative way, butch is a, like, really manly lesbian. Like, really masculine. Like, the first butch we saw was Meryl with that anchor tattoo. So you can really identify butches by their anchor tattoo, obviously. And actually, to be quite frankly, I don't give a damn about what the others say, because we all know that these are really like generic characters that really don't have anything to say. They don't even have a name. So what are we gonna do now is, I am gonna perform for the wrapping of this lecture a really conceptual music piece. That is about, can we turn the lights a bit slower? Like, get in the mood? Can we do that? Can we do that? Or is that automatic? 
Well, it is a song about women who die in the Russian roulette. And turn the volume up, please. Excuse me. Yeah, let it bang. It's a banger. Louder, please. Yeah. Take it deep, calm yourself, he says to me, if you play, you play for keeps, take the gun and count to three, I'm sweating now, I'm moving slow, no time to think. My turn to go And you can see my heart beating. You can see it through my chest And I'm terrified But I'm not leaving No, Know that I must pass this test So just pull the trigger A prayer to yourself. He said, Close your eyes. Sometimes it helps. And then again, a scary thought that he's here means he's never lost. And you can see my. Before my eyes, I'm wondering will I ever see another sunrise? So many won't have the chance to say goodbye, but it's too late to think of the value of my life, and you can't see my. And once again, I'm not dead, I'm a man. <laughs> Thank you. How's the time? That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So um, I think we'll head straight into the Q&A. Yes. Because um, that was interactive and... Uh, Seemingly interactive. It was not. <laughs> so we've been, we've been led along all the way. What? So we've been led along all the way. Led 
Yeah, you, oh yeah, of course, I'm the moderator. I said it, I'm your guide today and I'm not gonna be not editing your stuff. You've gotta tell me, so. All right. So there's yeah. always a higher power at work. Yeah. <laughs> okay, is there anyone like cheeky enough to? Oh yes! Yes, me. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Mm. It's very refreshing. Um, what I'd like to know is you chose this Miss Forfa to uh, do this show. Yeah. What would this presentation have missed if you would have presented this as a man? A very good question. Um, I kind of, like actually I hinted it a bit too much at the end. I think that was a bit cheeky. Like, I think the whole game is still through the male gaze. Like, that's, that's what you're asking, right? Like, the whole game is just because I'm here, like, dressed as a woman, and actually I'm just wearing, like, a dress and, and a wig, like, I'm not even fully, like, I don't have boobs and stuff, but that doesn't make a woman either. So, um, yeah, it wouldn't have changed anything, because the game is still made by someone who, who identifies as male. Is that to your liking? The answer, I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, um, I'm I'm sorry. I came in a little bit late, so I have no idea whatsoever if you addressed that beforehand. But uh, many of us probably have uh, have seen and heard and maybe contributed or maybe blocked the co the Gamergate controversy. Yeah, and uh, all that came along with it, with all the the online harassment of of people who of women online, of people who defended these women, um, uh, and um, uh, in the consequence that is that has been going on for years now. So in the consequence, uh, it happens now and then. Uh, that that game comes out where you actually play a feminine character, maybe even a female character, or the other way around. Um, and um, what do you think about that? Can we can we hope for uh, more inclusiveness in that direction? That uh, this these these uh, rigid. Uh, um, these rigid male gaze scripts that uh, still determine how games are developed are maybe uh, e eased uh, out a little bit so that more diversity can take place, more inclusiveness and um, more uh, inclusion of all the perspectives and not just the cis-hetero male gaze. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think so much has happened uh, since 2012 and I was, uh, to be frank, I was really not knowing what happened back uh, even until 2014 or something, until someone mentioned the Gamergate uh, kind of, yeah, movement to me. And I think so much has happened also in regard to how we see games, not only like this uh, little thing in the end uh, about putting characters in there and uh, old women, like in the cemetery cafe, like old people. Um, that would only be about identity. Like just because we have more old people in video games doesn't make them uh, more inclusive per se, I would say. But um, also how we think about the, the mechanics of games itself. Like this game really, like, I don't enjoy playing it, it's just a tool for me <laughs> to, to convey what I want to say. So, it's actually an elaborate PowerPoint presentation, if you will. Um, yeah, and nothing more. So, games can, the, the very mechanics of games can also be, like, queered, if you will. Yeah. Okay, a question Thank you. from the internet. Uh, sorry, what? New aesthetics art? What is, <laughs> what is that supposed to be? New aesthetics? I think that answers the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's art. Mike 3, please. Thank you. Um, there's a game that came out in the early 2000s. Uh, can you a game start that again? came Sorry. out in the. 
in the early 2000s called Siberia, and oh, yeah. it has a very strong female perspective, and, uh, and the heroine is getting empowered as she's going through the process of solving all the mysteries and um, in, through the game. And uh, I was wondering if you're keeping a secret collection of yours as, as a, a coll like collection of such games that have uh, heroines that get empowered through the game narrative. Yeah. Um, actually, just the games I played as a child, like really these games I grew up with, they had somehow an impact on me. Like nowadays I can filter way more what, what is going on with games and um, I think the really, uh, the really bizarre thing about, about these games that I grew up with was that I was kind of indoctrinated by them. I just didn't question why uh, women die all the time, or why women only um, ever talk about the one thing, which is love. Not even sex, it's just love. And that really cliched concept, while men were always like, blah, 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 let's fight the baddies, uh, you will always be safe with me, blah, blah, blah. And I think what really fascinates me about that is that I kind of, like, personally speaking, completely took that into my personal relationships. And I think when you grew up with games and really took them seriously, you have to kind of, or it's good to emancipate you, yourself from, from these notions, from these cliched notions. Otherwise, it's, yeah. I mean, these games really did something to me, uh, not only like good things. Like, of course, I want someone who like, jumps in front of a bullet for me and, and stuff, right? I mean... <laughs> oh, sorry, did I kind of uh, diverge from the question? <laughs> oh, fuck, <laughs> sorry. Uh, um, no, I don't keep a catalog, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mic number one. Um, <clears throat> you talked about the game as an elaborate PowerPoint presentation. Yes. And I was wondering your opinion on the future of game development perhaps being used as a device for performance or what you think the potential is for that. Yeah. Um, I'm not really into the gaming, um, uh, how's it called, the gaming industry, and I don't know much about it. I also don't know much about like, the, the bureaucratics of, of developing games and publishing them, but I think these triple A studios that really do big games, like recently Fallout 76, if you heard about that, and they really failed at that, and a really once loved company like Bethesda, who really did classics, was like really going down the drain, and bad shit happens with, with games that have to um, make a certain estimate of million, trillion, I don't know, dollars. I'm digressing again, so what's my point? Um, I think it's a, it's a very good evolution of, of, of what games can be, and games don't even have to look pretty today to be nice. Like all these, all these really popular queer games, or what you would call queer games, they are indie titles. And I'm kind of happy that AAA titles really don't, I don't really care for many of them anymore, because they are just getting a bit greedy. So I'm kind of looking forward what games can do in the future. Uh, does that answer your question? <laughs> um, sort of. Sort I was of. wondering also how the game is maybe not so much meant for other people to play as it is just for you to present, exactly. to present with. And I was wondering uh, what kind of genre of game you think that is and if that's a genre of the future, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Very good question. Um, and a very keen observation. I would say this game can actually not be played by you because I didn't like upload it and stuff. But also, why would you play Jenny Forfart? Like you're not Jenny Forfart, so I can only play myself, right? So I would say the genre would be um, an extension. <laughs> Welcome to my fantasy world, people. <laughs> yeah. No, you can't play the game, sorry. That's, that's okay. <laughs> okay, there are no more questions. Um, thank you very much for the one playable character, Jenny Forfart, Jan Thank Berger. you.